Welcome to this ADAX webinar. My name is Leonie Chevalier and I belong to the Swinburne node of ADAX. In this video, I am going to go over how to build a static website using Astro.js. We are going to go over what Astro.js is and why you should consider using it to build your static site. How to install it and get started on your first static site project, as well as a brief overview of Astro.js components and slot elements. Astro.js is a modern static site builder designed specifically for building fast, optimized websites. It uses a component-based architecture, which means that websites built with Astro.js are composed of individual components that encapsulate specific functionality or user interface elements. It allows you to use all your favorite frameworks, such as Cube, React, Tailwind, etc., and also has native Markdown support. Best of all, it has fantastic documentation and tutorials. We tried coming up with a table of what the pros and cons are to using Astro.js to build a website. The biggest draw is its ability to mix and match frameworks depending on your needs. We particularly like the native Markdown support that makes it easy for us to maintain and update blog style posts about various ADAX projects. While working with Astro, we have only really come across two negatives which are that it's not suited for complex applications such as admin dashboards or social networks. The other is that the more complexity you introduce with the number of different frameworks, the more likely you are to come across quirks that can slow down your progress. I'd like to highlight that we have yet to come across any fatal problems. We're really talking about quirks here. Installing Astro.js is straightforward. Again, the installation guide and documentation provided by the developers is excellent. And instead of trying to recreate that, I have opted to just point you to the link. Astro.js has a NPN, PNPN, and YAN installer available. Though if you rather manually install, they have a full guide for that as well. The main requirement and the most common pitfall when installing Astro.js is that the wrong version of Node.js is used. Make sure to check what version of Node you, it is you're using before trying the installation. When starting a new project, Astra has a very handy setup wizard. I will briefly take you through a live demo on how to set up a new empty project. All right, welcome to this live segment uh, for our ADUX webinar. I've got a VS Code window open right now with a terminal on the bottom. And I have navigated into the folder where I then want to start creating my projects, my super awesome project. And I'll show you currently it is all empty. Now, first things first, um, as mentioned beforehand, one of the biggest pitfalls is that people don't have the correct version or, you know, a most up to date version of Node installed or even if they have it installed, they're not actually using it. So before I do anything else, I'm going to go check my node version, going node V. Here we go, I'm using version 19.1. That should be enough for the purposes today. And then I can get started with the creation of my project. I am already in the directory where I want a folder to be created, so I don't have to go anywhere else. Now to create a new project, you input npm create astro at latest. And that should start the wizard. Give that a minute to spin up. There you are. Do we want to proceed? Yes, we would like to proceed. Hello, time to build our first website. Where would we like our website to be? Um, let's stick you in a folder called first website. Now, it's giving you the option to use a blog template, include sample files, or, you know, potentially even other templates that you've seen online. However, we are going to navigate using the arrow keys to empty because we just want to create an empty project. Now hit enter. 
Now it's really important that when you're creating this, that a new Astro project can only be created in a completely empty folder. So when you originally choose the designation for that folder, make sure that the name doesn't already exist. Install dependencies. Yes, we would like to install dependencies. Now it will then ask us in a second about TypeScript. Uh, in this particular project, we will not be using TypeScript, but if you think that's something you're going to use, then of course answer yes, and it will ask you a little bit more about this, how, how stringent you want your rules to be. Um, but this is outside of the scope of what we're going to cover here. And installing dependencies may take a minute or two, just hang in there with me. All right, that was it. Do we plan on writing TypeScript? No, we are not planning on writing TypeScript, as just said. Do we want to initialize a Git repository? Yes, and the answer to this should always be yes. All right, uh, it's informing me that there is a new version of NPM available for me. I will update this at another time. So if I go into open and it's asking me documents, ADAX, webinars, AstroJS, my super awesome project, first website, open. There we are. So I have opened what has been generated just now. All right, let's pop the terminal back open. And you can see it's the project structure on the side with its pages. And this would be our first landing page. Okay. Um, PM use note. I just opened a new terminal, so I will have to tell it to use the correct node again. This is why I did that. And if I now actually want to run, you know, this particular website, and I will quickly edit Astro to my super awesome project. Amazing. All right, so to actually start this and then to have a live view of what this would be look like, we'd type npm run dev. Just thinking about it. Great. And if we now click on this link, follow link. It will come up. Okay, so I've dragged the um, newly opened window in. So localhost 3000, that's pretty standard. Whoops, moving it out of the way again. You can see down here um, which localhost this has been assigned to. If you have multiple things running, you might want to assign a different number, etc. etc. Alright, you can see where I entered my super awesome project. That's actually the title of what's going to be presented in the tab here and not Astro. But the fun thing, go into Astro, do your text here. We save. You can see it already says reload screen and when I then whoop, go back here you see your text here it's easy as all you have to do is when you make edits hit save and it will automatically populate onto the local host all right on with the webinar now that you've set up your first project let me tell you about the structure of Astro projects 
If you're using one of the templates provided, you might have already seen something similar to this, but here I have displayed an image of the project structure for the GWDC website. The page folder contains your routes. Files placed here will automatically translate to a live URL on your sites. Components, as the name suggests, should store your components, things like custom cards, banners, buttons, and so on. And finally, layouts, which are used just as you would any other component, but they store the styling information of your page. In our GWDC website example, we have both a base layout for the whole page, as well as a sub layout specifically for blog posts. Now, I mentioned components quite a bit there, but what actually are they? Components are the building blocks of websites in Astro.js. They define the structure, behavior, and appearance of a specific part of a website. Each component is self-contained and can have its own data, logic, and styling. Components can range from simple elements like buttons or navigation bars to more complex structures like entire sections or layouts. Components can be reused between different pages as often as you need. They can also be nested to create more complex components and layouts. We differentiate between component script and component templates, so bear with me here for a second. Component scripts. Component scripts contain the logic and behavior of a component. These scripts define how the component behaves, interacts with data, handles user input, and performs any necessary calculations or operations. Component scripts can import and export data, functions, and other modules to be used within your component. They are denoted by code fences, i.e. a block of three dashes. Variables in this code section are available by default. Now, for component templates. Component templates, on the other hand, define the structure and, ma and makeup of a component. They specify how the component's content and elements are structured and rendered. They can include placeholders for dynamic data, use conditional rendering, loop through data collections, and include other components. Now, I know this was a lot. So to summarize, the component script handles the component's behavior and data manipulation, all that stuff. While the component template defines the visual representation and structure of the component. Let's take a look at the base layout on screen now. In the component script, we import a number of components such as headers, footers, and banners. In our component template, we then use these imported components to form a reusable layout. This template is going to be used on all of our pages in the website in order. Let's take a closer look at the base layout on screen now. In the component script, we import a number of components such as headers, footers, and banners. In our component template, we then use these imported components to form our reusable layout. This template is going to be used on all of our pages on the website. In order for it to work though, we need to leave space for the page's content. This is where slot elements come in. To dynamically insert content into a component template, we use slot elements. Slot elements act as placeholders where the content from the parent component or other components can be injected. A child component uses the slot elements defined in the parent component's template to determine where the content will be inserted. The child component can include its own markup and logic around the slot elements. The content passed to the slot elements can be dynamic, such as text, HTML, or even other components. This allows for flexible and customizable rendering of the content. During the rendering process, Astro.js resolves the slot elements in the components template and replaces them with the provided content. We use slot elements to create layouts for blog posts. This way, we can reuse the same code for any new blog posts and entries. I included these screen grabs on how we use slots when working on the GWDC website. We display all current projects in the shape of blog posts. The corresponding marked off file you can see a picture of in the bottom right. All projects will follow a similar layout 
with the specific content we want to be rendered in the post circled in orange. We point our markdown file to a specific layout, here blog underscore layout dot astro, which you can see above on the top right hand side. There I have also circled a specific slot element in orange. Finally, on the left hand side of the screen, the large image denotes the base layout that is used as a base in blog underscore layout. This very simple code is used to generate reusable templates that we can inject blog content into easily. It also ensures consistency between all blog posts as well as keeping maintenance to a minimum. This was a very short introduction to Astro.js, but there's a lot more to learn here. I highly encourage you to work through the tutorials on the Astro.js website. The tutorial is very comprehensive and covers everything we've gone through in more depth and more, of course. This is it for this ADAX webinar. I hope you have found it useful. We have further created a list of related reading materials for this topic. So if you're interested, please have a look. As always, you can find more webinars and helpful tools on the ADAX website, as well as on our YouTube channel. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.